Hey everyone, Reese here, and welcome back to Control Alt Reese. Now I'm really excited this morning because I literally just had this come through my letterbox. This is the Retro HQ Jaguar GD or Game Drive, and it's the first modern fully featured flash cart available for the Atari Jaguar. So this flash cart allows you to run games from SD card, it has its own built in menu system, and it also supports save games. But I think perhaps the most exciting aspect of it for me, and probably most other Jaguar owners, is that it boasts 100% compatibility with the commercial releases on the system. So all 50 games which were commercially released for the Atari Jaguar run on this cartridge with 100% compatibility and save game support. And that's pretty exciting because a lot of those games are very rare now and go for quite big money, and it's the only opportunity a lot of us will have to be able to experience them. So in this video I'm going to unwrap this cartridge, I'm going to get it set up, I'll give you my genuine first impressions of it, and we'll also check out some of those games. But first, the story. The Jaguar Game Drive was designed by a chap going by the name of Saint, real name James, and marketed under his company name of Retro HQ. He also designed an excellent flash cart for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and has one coming out very soon for the Atari Lynx. I first came across this cart early last year when James put out a video of an early prototype demoing some of its features. That video has since been taken offline, and the only reference I can find to it is on the Retro RGB website, and as you can see from the screenshot they've posted, the user interface was all looking really nice even back at that early stage. There's actually been a public domain flashcard design for the Jag doing the rounds for years, known as the Skunk Board. There's a great overview over on Mark Fix's stuff if you'd like to go and check that out and compare. I'll put a link up above and down in the description. I've looked into it myself a few times and even nearly bought one, and although there have been a few improvements over the years, like the ability to save games in the latest revision, the Skunk Board was mainly aimed at developers and isn't quite as user friendly. They're also quite difficult to get hold of. Still, it's worth a look if you're in the market for something like this. So why buy a flashcart for the Jag? Well, the console was on the market for such a limited time and saw so little developer support that there are some games that are almost impossible to get hold of, and prices are only going up all the time. Personally, I'm looking forward to the Game Drive's upcoming support for Jaguar CD games, considering the fact that the Jag CD add-ons sell for really silly money these days, not to mention being generally unreliable. The other cool aspect is Homebrew. When Hasbro owned Atari in the late 90s, they opened up the Jaguar platform and released all of the patents and copy protection information into the public domain meaning that there's now a big homebrew scene putting out some great quality ports and even some original games. Retro HQ have announced that they will work with homebrew developers to support secure digital releases of homebrew titles, massively reducing the cost of physical distribution. I'm looking to cover those in a future video, if there's enough interest. Anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's unwrap the game drive and see what it's all about. So as you can see, this is still sealed. It's literally just arrived. Uh, this is how it comes. Uh, this is the final retail packaging, it's not a freebie or a review unit or anything like that. Um, this is something I genuinely paid full price for because I'm going to get a lot of use out of it with my Jaguar. Um, so yeah, I, I have quite a bit of experience with other flash carts like the Everdrives for my uh, Game Boy and the Mega Drive and the uh, Famicom, um, quite a few others actually lying around. Uh, I think they're an absolutely fantastic tool for saving wear and tear on the cartridge port and checking out games that you might not have a chance to check out any other way because they're no longer commercially available. Um, just all of that kind of stuff, you know, keep the games nice and neat and tidy in the boxes without too much wear and tear. So I think without further ado, we'll get this packet open and have a look what's in here. So we have a manual, and we'll have a look at that in a second. And this is the actual cartridge itself. So as you can see, it's not the same size and shape as a retail Jaguar cartridge. I'll just uh, get that out. The uh, retail Jaguar cartridge is, of course, famously modelled on the uh, Japanese uh, Tori gates uh, with the thing across the top. So there's a, a nice Jag fact for you. Uh, this is quite a bit bigger. It's quite heavy. Uh, feels nice and solid and like a substantial, uh, well-made product. So that's great. Um, very professional looking. There's also this getting started guide in the packet, so just very briefly looks like it covers uh, just updating the firmware and how to navigate the menu system. Uh, very uh, short and sweet, but I think the basics are all covered there, so that looks good. So I think what I'll do before I get anything loaded up is just put the cartridge into the actual Jaguar and see what happens. So when this boots up, it skips the usual Jaguar uh, startup screen with the animated logo and stuff, which is a bit of a shame because I'm a fan of that, but uh, I, I can understand, I guess. 
uh, and we're presented with this QR code and link. Now, I believe that the link is personalised to my Game Drive cartridge. I think it's got my serial number in it, so obviously I've had to uh, blank that out. So that link takes us to a page where we can download the firmware, and that just goes in the root of the SD card. So I think it's time to copy some stuff over. So I just have some files here that I've already prepared ready to go. So this is the firmware update file. Uh, the SD card is just a bog standard 8GB uh, fat formatted card. Apparently this flash card works with pretty much any uh, fat formatted card, so I haven't done anything special to prepare that. So I've just copied the firmware update file over. I think while we're here, uh, we'll copy my games over. So that's the complete commercially released ROM set for the Jaguar. That's about 200 meg in total. So uh, no need for such a big SD card, but unfortunately they're, they're not really available in smaller sizes anymore. So the other thing that you will need are marquee files, or, well, not need as such, but they're nice to have. Um, and somebody's posted them all on the Atari Age forums quite helpfully. Uh, I'll put a link to that down in the description. So these marquee files basically contain the artwork for the game, which is displayed on the game drives menu and apparently they need to be copied into the same place as the game ROMs themselves uh, with the same file names I think so I have gone through and sorted out the file names and I think the majority of them should match up or at least enough to be able to demo this there we go and the other thing that I thought would be fun to try would be the uh, where were we the bad apple demo because everyone loves bad apple demo so let's just have a look at that. That's got the marquee file and the ROM file in there, so I think I'll stick that in its own folder. We'll just have a we'll just run that first. Once the cartridge is all up and running, just to demo that everything's working. So there is also a utility called PNG to MRQ. This is for converting your own PNG files into marquee files. Um, I might have a look at that if I'm not happy with the artwork, but from what I've seen I think it's all pretty professional and pretty good, so we'll leave that alone for now. So now we'll eject the card and move over to the Jaguar. So moving back over to the Jag itself, we just pop the micro SD card into the slot in the game drive. Like so, and hopefully... And there we go, there's the menu. So I haven't actually read the instructions because you shouldn't need to read instructions for these things. So let's have a look. So like I said, I think just to test things out, we'll run the Bad Apple demo. This is 14 megabytes, which is, uh, what, 14 times the size of uh, your typical Jaguar game. So I imagine it's going to take slightly longer to load. Oh, yes. I've put the full capture of that up on my channel if you want to check it out. I'll pop a link up above and down in the description as always. So if we just turn the Jag off and back on again, it boots back into the menu and we can check out what this looks like. Right then, at this point I'm just going to have to pause for a moment and confess to something. So two days ago when I originally recorded this video, I ran into some issues with the game drive. I had some ROMs that were missing pictures, uh, missing the images on the menu system, 
I had ROMs that wouldn't load properly. I had a prompt that was popping up asking me about memory addresses. I had games that wouldn't save. And I finished with the conclusion that uh, the game drive, while being you know very promising and, and generally working quite well, was probably not quite there yet and, and that the user experience wasn't perfect and that maybe after a couple of firmware updates it, it would be you know 100%. It turns out I'd made a mistake and the ROM files that I'd downloaded from archive.org had actually been modified. So in the world of the uh, Atari Jaguar, um, there are various ROMs that have been released over the years and some of them have been modified to work with the Skunkboard flash cart that I mentioned before. Some of them have been modified to work with various emulator efforts over the years. Now, these modified ROMs don't work with the game drive, or don't officially work with the game drive. Some of them can be made to work, and I didn't realise this at the time. So I've now gone back and found the official list of CRC checksums for the game ROMs. I've put together my own set of ROMs, guaranteeing that they match the officially supported ones. I've been through the vast majority of them and they work perfectly, absolutely perfectly. They, they load, they load very quickly, they run perfectly, save games work, it's absolutely fantastic. So of course I couldn't put the original version of this video out with my original conclusion um, because I was completely wrong. So what I'll do is I'll put some information down in the description on how to track down those correct ROM files for the game drive, which should hopefully help some people out. And uh, what follows is my now reshot take two of my review of the Jaguar game drive. So as you can see, the game drive boots up really quickly into the menu. Just go through to my games directory. And uh, now we have the marquee files all set up and ready to go. Uh, we have the box art and a screenshot on the right hand side for each game, which is really great. It's really fantastic feature. Uh, so I have the full set of officially supported ROMs on here now. So I do own a reasonable uh, collection of boxed Jaguar games anyway, so I do have experience with a lot of these. Uh, but there's some of the rarer ones that I wanted to check out. So one that I haven't played before is Atari Karts. Obviously, following the success of Mario Kart back in the back in the day, uh, everyone got on the kart racer bandwagon, uh, including Atari. I think my favourite kart racer is probably Wacky Wheels on the PC, actually. If you haven't uh, checked that one out. So once the ROM image is loaded, the Jaguar reboots on its own. We go through the normal boot up process. So we're greeted with an angry octopus on a go-kart, because why not? So select a challenge. So like I said, I've never played this before, so I think we'll go in at beginner level. Just to see what the game's about. So we have a character selection screen. So we've got Regius, the funky chicken. Maybe he's a cockerel, actually. Scully, the weird skeleton thing with fangs. Do you have fangs? Okay, that's weird. Pulpito. Oh, I see. That's the uh, that's the octopus. Mistress. That's the obligatory sexy lady character. Bentley Bear. Well, he looks familiar. Um, bulky. Some kind of alien thing. And Ptarmigan, who is an angry, evil snowman. Um, okay, let's... Uh, We'll go for the octopus, because why not? So we've got our different cups here, as per Mario Kart. So we've got, uh, we'll go for the Boregas Cup. Or is it Boregas? Of course, that's the name of the road where Atari's headquarters was back in the day in California, Boregas Avenue. Now, of course, being on a flash cart, um, I don't have any instructions for this, for this game. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh. And I've picked something up. I think that's a speed boost. I have to say the layout of this track is eerily familiar. 
is uh, pretty much identical to the first Mario Kart track. Two, uh, three 90 degree left hand bends and this little hairpin bit. But the carts handle quite well, I uh, can't really complain. Obviously the graphics are not uh, not the amazing quality that we were promised by Atari back in the day. Uh, what's that? Another power up. Oh, I finished the race anyway. And I won. Okay. Yeah, the graphics uh, probably aren't the uh, incredible quality that we were promised back in the day by Atari, but it's fine, I suppose. Looks alright, plays alright. Not sure I'd want to pay 200 quid for it. Okay, now we have the obligatory ice track. Will it be slippery? Oh. So I picked something else up. What is this? How do I use this? That button. Okay. I have no idea what that power up does. Oh, just crashed into an invisible rock. Hole that you can't fall down. The music's quite nice. So, um, I think I will leave it at that for Atari Karts for now, just for this video. Like I said before, it's your typical kart racer, nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next game. So one game I have heard lots of good things about is Super Burnout, and it's another one of these games that's quite, uh, quite rare and quite expensive on the Jaguar, so let's have a look. Can't believe how quickly this loads. Super Burnout. Here we go. A or C to start. Right. We won't bother looking at the options. America, high speed. Australia, technical. Brazil, technical. France. France, semi-technical. Hungary. There's certainly a lot of tracks anyway. We'll go for America for the high speed track. Ready, set, go! Graphics looking quite nice already, actually. Um, quite heavily sprite based for something that's supposedly a 3D console, but. Wow, oh, it is high speed. I'm in seventh position. Which is not a brilliant start. How do you break? Perhaps we don't need to break. Uh, is that catch fence in there? Oh, there we go. That was inevitable. Nice trees there, lots of uh, rows and rows of identical trees, as racetracks often have. Best time! Three laps to go! Whoa! Got some stuff off uh, over in the distance there, big city, nice city skyline. It's representative of America, I suppose, maybe. Cool, this is.
Best time. Best time. How many laps are we doing? Oh, we're going straight into that corner again. First time. Ooh, so it's night time and the headlights just come on. That's a nice touch. Oh, the uh, lights are on in some of the office buildings off in the distance as well. And I've fallen off again, which is not really surprising. Final lap. Whoa, yep. Every single time. I'm still not sure how the brakes work. I'm not sure what button it is. I've noticed on eBay there are actually people selling replacement, uh, brand new controller overlays for the Atari Jaguar, which is probably quite useful if you own a flash cart. Whoa, wow, that was quick. Okay. Seventh position. I don't know how many people. I think there are only seven in this race. And I'm well behind. Best time. So, great game, actually. Yeah. Controls really nicely. Uh, looks great. Uh, very difficult. But it was my first ever attempt. Speed 105.92 miles per hour, so I fell off my bike seven or eight times at 105 miles per hour and somehow I'm still alive. So there doesn't seem to be any kind of career mode in this game. Uh, but still, plenty of tracks there and uh, looks like it would take a while to master it. So yeah, a lot of fun. So let's move on to the next game. Now we've checked out a couple of racing games so far, so I think we should do a platformer. I'm going to go with Zool 2. Another one of those rarer and more sought after games on the system. And, and also a game that I don't own. So Zool, of course, being a massive hit on the Amiga back in the day, it was also ported to the Atari ST. Chopper chips. Let's find start cutting option options. Oh, so we have boys all and girls all in this one. Anyone, uh, anyone complaining about female protagonists in games being a new thing? Uh, obviously, wasn't around in the nineties. Of course, they're wrong and they're idiots. It's been a very long time since I've played Zool. Everything seems to be killing me. Wow. Is that a secret? It's like a secret. Very cool. Extra life and everything in there. It's health. Another secret? Shortcut? Oh yeah, of course you can bounce off the walls. I remember. Come on, Zool, get down. Down, boy! Come on! Yeah. I'm not very good at this game. Come on. Yep, yeah, come on. 
There we go. I seem to have two flying eyeballs following me around. Oh, we can't grab onto that. No, that's slippery. Okay. Shoot these douchebags. Ghosts all following me around. Since this game wasn't frantic enough. So as per the original Zool, you have to collect uh, pretty much everything on the level, I think, to be able to continue, and I haven't done that, uh, because it's been so long since I've played Zool that I completely forgot about that. But anyway, yeah, really great game, a really fast paced, really great looking sprites, a uh, lot of fun actually, yeah. I can highly recommend this one, definitely one of the best games on the Jag, I would say. Finally, another expensive and relatively rare game, although I don't think it's in quite the same league as a couple of the ones that we've covered, uh, but certainly one of the better games on the system. It's Raiden. Uh, it's a uh, kind of bullet hell shmup type game. It's a port of an arcade game, actually. Yet again, another game that I'm yet to experience on the Jag, uh, purely because it's been out of my price range whenever I've seen it up for sale. Incidentally, I know of at least one person who has actually sold all of their Jag collection and replaced it with a uh, game drive flashcard. So for him, buying the flashcard was actually a profitable move. Here we go, B to shoot as always. So I do love this type of game. I'm a big fan of Don Pachi and Do Don Pachi at the arcade. Oops, talking there, I'm getting distracted. Um, R type, of course, if you want to go uh, horizontal. You can see my thumb getting very tired with this B button, which is uh, one of the downfalls of the Jag Pad. So I suppose this is a good opportunity to plug my one joystick to rule them all series. Dear, I'm not doing very well at this at all, am I? Too distracted talking. Ah! Yes, uh, so the original inspiration for my one joystick to rule them all series was to get an arcade stick working with the Jaguar, um, the Neo Geo stick, but it turned out the Jaguar was a bit too complicated, so I started off on easier things, but I am going to be coming back to it very soon. I think the 
this is definitely the game for it. Big nasty tank thing. So do we have any other weapons? Yes we do. That's good. Okay, we can just hold down B apparently. I'm not sure if the rate of fire is near the rate of fire is a bit slower. A bit easier on the thumb. Oh, there's another one. Wonderful. Have I got another one? Yeah. first level over. Yeah, very cool. Great fun this. Um, controls really well yet again. Another one of those games that really shows what the Jag was capable of, uh, but unfortunately gets overlooked. So I think we'll leave it at that. So, what are my first impressions of the Jaguar game drive? Well, if it isn't obvious enough already, I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a really great product. It's obvious that Saint over at Retro HQ has put a, a lot of engineering effort into it, a lot of thought into the design of the menu system and in making it easy to update and easy to copy ROMs across. It's certainly on par with, if not better than, the flashcards that I've used with my other systems, and I can highly recommend it. I know I'm personally going to get a lot of use out of this flashcart, and one of my plans for it is to put together a video on some of those rarer and more expensive Jaguar games, so if that's something you'd like to see, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any thoughts on flashcarts, maybe you've tried the skunk board and want to share your experience, or maybe you're looking to buy one of these and have a question about it, or anything else really about the Atari Jaguar or about uh, the about the game drive in general, uh, please let me know down in the comments. I'm more than happy to have a chat and uh, more than happy to answer people's questions and even take suggestions for future video ideas. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.